So this just came in and I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, let's get hacking. What's up everybody, I'm James with Microvellum and welcome back to Wood Hacks. As you may have guessed from the intro, I'll be demonstrating how to use these. Now, a lot of you out there are probably geeking out after seeing these because you know what this video is gonna be about. For those who don't know what these are, you're in for a treat. These, my friends, are a part block and virtual machine base. You can use a set like this to help determine part location and orientation and machining origins. Before I got my hands on one of these bad mamma jammas, I had no idea what the difference was between a base point and a machine point. That's what I'm gonna show you in this episode, so let's get started. First thing I want to explain is the block because 90% of the time, you'll be using this thing without the base to check part rotations and base points. Okay, so you'll notice on this base, there are base points two, four, six, and eight, along with EBL1, EBL2, EBW1, and EBW2, which stand for edge band length and edge band width. On the opposite side, I have the same edge band info, but I have base points one, three, five, and seven. To help with understanding rotations and base points, I'm gonna throw up a helpful little document as a reference. Now, <clears throat> base points are used to locate the part within your product or subassembly. Looking at the rotation chart, a zero, zero, zero rotation of the block would look like this, with points two, four, six, and eight on the top, and one, three, five, and seven on the bottom. A base point of one would be the bottom left front point of the block or part. Now, to rotate the part appropriately, you'll need to understand that all rotations are clockwise when looking down the positive axis from the origin. So imagine the axis is an arrow in a bow and your eye represents the origin. So looking down your arrow, all the parts will rotate clockwise. Sorry, that's really the best way I can explain that. It'll make more sense as you mess around with rotations. All right, so looking at the rotation chart again, you'll notice some common parts are listed with certain rotations. So bottoms, tops, shelves, etc., will use a rotation of zero, zero, zero. However, the base points will be different for many of those parts. For example, a bottom will use a base point of three, which would be the bottom left rear point of the part, which would be the point that meets the wall. A top would have a base point of four, which would be the top left rear point of the part. These points are used because it makes it easy to write origin formulas. Z origins for the bottom would be zero or the toe kick height and tops would be equal to the height of your product. Now onto the sides. Sides would have a rotation of zero, negative 90, zero. Left sides will have a base point of four and right sides will have a base point of three, which would be the bottom, rear, outside points of the cabinet. Again, to make it easy to write uh, origin formulas. Left sides, would have an X origin of zero and right sides would have an X origin equal to the width of the product in typical applications. Backs and doors will typically have a rotation of zero, negative 90, 90, and again, using a base point that will make it easy to formulate the origins. Now that'll wrap up the explanation of the block and base points. I'll make sure to include this cheat sheet in our community forums post along with this video. All right, on to the really fun part, machine points and machining fields. Base points, as I mentioned earlier, are used to locate the part. 
machine points locate the origin of the machining on the part. And this is where the base comes in handy. So a quick explanation of the virtual machine base. There are two fields, virtual normal and virtual mirrored. In the top left corner of the normal field is the machining origin. Positive X would go left to right, positive Y would be top to bottom. In the mirrored field, the machine origin is the top right corner with positive X going right to left and positive Y still going from top to bottom. Around the fields, you'll see faces one, two, three, and four, which reference the edges of your part. So for machining like edge drilling and so forth. So depending on which field you're in will determine the orientation of the edge faces. Lastly, as you look down on the base, the top face or face up will be face five and the underside will be face six. Hence why you've likely heard the phrases face five and face six machining. Phase five would be everything your CNC or point to point can machine. Phase six would be everything it can't machine right away because it's resting on your machine bed. Okay, so how do machine points work and why are they important? Best way to describe this is to use the example of a left and right cabinet side. Looking at a left side with a rotation of zero, negative 90, zero, the machining of your part would occur on the face with points one, three, five, and seven, right? You're gonna have line bore machining, dados, dowels, whatever on that face. Looking at a right side with the same rotation, the machining would happen on the face with points two, four, six, and eight. So back to our left side, in a typical product, the machining origin references the bottom front corner of the part, which would be a one. Right, you'd want your shelf machining working from the front towards the back and from the bottom towards the top. So to test this, let's drop it in our base, matching 0.1 to our machine origin point. In this scenario, the line bore row would be going from bottom to top, and the rows of the line bore would be placed from the front to the back. So a machine point of one, is correct. <clears throat> now let's take a look at a right side. We want to reference the same point, the bottom front corner of the face that will receive the machining, so two. Drop this guy in the base, matching the point to our machine origin, and we can see that something is different. Our part is rotated 90 degrees in our field. Now the part in your product in a 3D environment will not rotate because Machine points aren't used to locate or orient your part. However, the machining on that part would rotate. So if you drew this back, your line bore row would drill from the front to the back and the placement of each row would be from the bottom to the top. So a machine point of two will not work for the right side. What we need is a mirrored machine point. Let's check that out. By matching point two to our machine origin in the mirrored field, we can see that that looks much better. The line bore row would be going from bottom to top, and the rows of the line bore would be placed from the front to the back. So with the sides of a cabinet, left sides will have a machine point of one, and right sides will have a machine point of 2M, M meaning mirrored. Let's see what that looks like when we draw a left and right end in 2D. Okay, so we can see that these two parts are mirrored of each other and the machine origins are represented by the circles located in the corners of each part, which accurately match our machine base. As you look through the products within the library and look at the base points and machine points, you'll begin to identify exactly how the machining instructions are being calculated. And you'll know that machine tokens like holes three or holes four are edge drilling tokens applied to faces three and four. And tokens like P line five or P line six are routes on faces five and six. I hope all that makes sense, but if you have any questions about this, 
post those on our community forums or request some additional training with one of our service providers and we'll get you squared away. Now, if you don't have a block set like this, I highly recommend making one. I had this one made, it took a while to get, but it was worth it. So remember, base points locate the part and machine points locate the origin of the machining on the part. Thanks again for watching. I hope this helps. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you next time. What's up everybody? I'm James with Microvellum and welcome back. Why aren't you scrolling? What's up everybody? I'm James with Microvellum and welcome back to Woodhacks. Why aren't you scrolling, you turd bucket? What's up everybody? I'm James with Microvellum and this thing is not working. You stupid piece of crap. Sorry everybody, I suck at memorizing lines, so I actually use a teleprompter. And it's not working right now. I'll be demonstrating how to use these. Now, a lot of you out there are probably...